difficult as this season has been. I know many of you are wondering, we are doing okay, and uh, I am feeling <clears throat> much better, still have a bit of a nagging cough, uh, and the entire family is recovering. But we are, even though my official quarantine ended yesterday, our family uh, tested positive later throughout the course of the, the week or two, and so that uh, keeps our quarantine numbers uh, a little, <clears throat> a couple more, a couple more days before our family is able to return to normal life. But we're doing well, and I'm coming to you from our mostly finished kitchen this morning as we gather for worship and around the Word, uh, and as we gather in this Advent season as a reminder, I think this year more than ever, of our need for Advent. That the world is not as it should be, and we know that. But we also live in the hope of the world as it will be, in the promise of our faith and in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And with that, we open with our promise from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. And friends, this is our hope and our promise as we enter this Advent season. This morning, I'm just going to do a brief devotional sermon from here in my mostly completed kitchen that has been on hold now for a couple weeks since we're not allowed to let anybody in the house. As I think back on 2020, of January 2020, I laugh. I don't laugh because I think 2020 is a year worth laughing about, far from it. I laugh because I think of all of the pastors, myself included, around the country who were uh, talking about vision and the great things that we were going to do in the year. And it's sort of that reminder that man makes plans, but the Lord determines the steps. A year ago feels like a different world and a different time. And I think about last Christmas and all the things that we could do that we won't be able to do this year. And we celebrated Thanksgiving for us alone in our house, which was weird. Not something we've ever done before. As many of you know, the Franklins have been hit with COVID. We don't know where we got it. We don't know how. I've been adamant that in the church we would follow masking rules and that we would socially distance and wash our hands, we felt like we had been very careful, and we still don't know where we came in contact with the virus, but we did. And and so uh, on one hand, it worked. All of our uh, social distance and guidelines that the church has put in place because we were certainly positive with COVID two Sundays ago, and as far as we know, nobody else in the church has gotten it. But at the same time, we have been knocked out, and really knocked out for a few weeks now. 2020 has not been the year that any of us hoped for or any of us imagined or any of us wanted it to be, not even close. We did not fulfill our 2020 visions. (laughs) And that, I think, leads us to this season of Advent. In Advent, this morning we start a new sermon series, You Are Not Alone. We're not quite sure how we're going to do this. The session will meet this week to decide. We want it to be in an abundance of caution that 14 days past exposure from us, that uh, we wanted to be clear of that before we came back together. But the session will meet this week via Zoom and decide how we want to go forward from here. And so we started this new sermon series virtually in a place that we never thought we would. Never thought I'd be preaching to you from my kitchen. A series that is entitled, You Are Not Alone. This year has taken a toll on many of us, and 
that's understandable. Mental health is another aspect of this pandemic that has been and will linger, I think, well after this virus is gone or defeated. The feelings of isolation, of loneliness, of anxiety have uh, long-lasting effects on us. In many ways, this year is a reminder of how much we need the season of Advent. A reminder of the darkness of our world. This time of year, I usually get complaints because I'm one of those people that like to hold off the Christmas songs until we actually get to Christmas, that we, that we live in the season of Advent. But I wonder if this year it will take on new meaning for us. The season of Advent is not one we skip over to get to the joy of Christmas. The season of Advent is not preparing our hearts for the birth of Jesus. The season of Advent is about a weary world in need of a Savior. The season of Advent is about a light that breaks into the darkness and a promise that God is with us. That he will come again to renew and restore his good creation. It isn't right now, in this moment, exactly what we need. For God to come and to restore and renew his good creation, you see, this year, we can't skip this season. This year, we are reminded of the promise that we are not alone, that God, Emmanuel, is with us. And in that promise, we are reminded that we are not forsaken, reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, reading verses 6 Hear now the reading of God's holy word. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, we pray as we meet together today virtually from all different parts of our country and of our city, that you would strengthen us and encourage us in this season and in this moment, that we would rest on the promise. We pray this in the name of the one who promises to never leave us or forsake us, Jesus Christ. I've told you before, and I think many of you know, when I was a kid, I was a wanderer. I was that kid that would kind of just take off. And it was never my parents' fault. I would wander. And there was one particular instance that I remember very vividly. I was about five or six years old. And we would spend all day at the baseball fields because there were five of us, uh, of the six kids at, at one time playing. And so we just played all day Saturday. Somebody was playing all and one day, I very vividly remember my dad putting me in the van for us to go home, except I was the only one who got in the van. He was rounding everybody else up, and if you don't know how to round up six kids in one place, it generally takes a while. And so in my mind, I thought, well, I'll just walk over there to that field right in front of our van where my dad will be able to see me, and I will watch the game that's happening. Except, when I turned around, the van was gone. I have no idea how long I was there. I was prone to wander. It happened to me a lot. And so I went and sat in the bleachers and watched this game, thinking to myself, my parents will surely come back for me. They will remember me. They, they will know that I am not with them. And they did. They just didn't come back for me. You see, my dad, in his mind, and he told me later on, that he knew he put me in the van, and he did. 
And so as they got home and realized that I was not with them, they sent all of my brothers and sisters and the neighborhood kids on a search party. They turned the house upside down. For hours, they looked for me throughout the neighborhood, calling friends, looking around, trying to find where I had gone, and they could not, for the life of them, find me. I, on the other hand, was sitting in the bleachers watching baseball, not sure why my parents had not come back for me yet. I don't know how long it's been. My dad told me it was a couple hours, but I sat there and I waited. I waited and wondered, why aren't they coming back to get me? I felt in many ways like I had been forgotten or abandoned. Now, it was my fault. I got out of the van. They didn't know where I was. As I was sitting there and the game in front of me was ending, I started to get worried because it had been a while. And then I heard my name called out from behind me, Stephen. And I turned around to find my Aunt Lynn. Aunt Lynn said to me, where are your parents? And I said, they left me. <laughs> I didn't tell her the whole story. She grabbed my hand and took me up to the concession stand, bought me a red, white, and blue snow cone, and then called my parents. When my dad picked me up, I was upset, but so was he, and I couldn't understand why. And I said to him, why did you leave me? And he said, I did not leave you. Why did you get out of the van? And then he said something to me that I'll never forget. Steve, I would never, ever leave you. I know I'm fortunate. I know that I have a dad whose promises are true. He wouldn't. He wouldn't leave me. See, the truth is, the fact of the matter is, I left him. I wandered. And as I reflect on this as a parent, I couldn't help but think about how often we wander from God, from our Father in Him, who gives us the same promise. I'll never leave you. So often, we feel abandoned. We feel left behind. Often, we are unsure, uncertain, if God is really with us. But the issue is us, not Him. See, that's the promise, the promise of God given to the people of God. As Israel stands on the edge of the promised land in Deuteronomy, Moses is handing off the torch, handing the keys over. He's led the people out of slavery and through the desert. However, because of his sin, God has forbid him from entering the promised land. But I think it's more than that. I think God is saying, this is not your story. This is my story. And your portion of it is over. I feel like it's a moment of wisdom sharing of the one who's led, passing it on to the one who's next, which is Joshua. He's been chosen to lead the people of God into the promised land. And they're going to have to trust that God's going to deliver. But the road to the promised land is difficult. We want the road to be easy. We mistake the idea of God's promises also mean that it will be simple or easy because God is making it happen for us. But the opposite is actually true. And we see that throughout the course of Scripture. The journey to claim the promise, the journey into the blessings and promises of God is a difficult one. The Israelites are locked away in slavery, wandering through the desert for 40 years and now stand on the edge of battle. We want the promise to be handed to us like a Christmas gift, something we didn't earn or deserve, but that's not the truth. Often, to live in the promises of God means the faithful and difficult climb up the mountain. And so when Moses is getting ready to hand the torch off, he says to Joshua, be strong and courageous. These are not words you speak to your wife when she goes out for a walk. Right? 
We don't instruct people to strength and courage when the journey they're about to take is going to be smooth or easy or when they go out to the grocery store. Maybe now in a COVID world, but we need strength and courage when life gets hard. Joshua needs strength and courage if he's going to lead the people into the battle for the promised land. You see, we'd rather the promises be handed to us, but that's not how any of this works. And it's in that we find the beauty of our faith. Even though the road to Israel has been filled with difficult journeys, Moses knows that God has been with them this whole time. His encouragement to Joshua is so very simple. That you have no reason to fear, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. The word forsake means to deserve or abandon. And the promise of God is more than the promised land. It's something greater. It's more than the outcome. The promises of God are about the presence of God. Jesus is about the presence of God. And in this moment, in this season of darkness and despair, the entire world is in right now. We're all in it together. Isn't that our hope? For the person locked away at home because they fear for their health and safety, legitimately, by the way, I now speak from experience. (laughs) God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. To the person who's going to spend that first Christmas without the one they love the most, who can't quite comprehend the idea of joy right now in this season, you're who Advent is for. And you have the promise that God is with you. He'll never leave you forsake you. The one who's turned around and realized the man has left. (laughs) He was wandered. God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. This is the promise of our faith. And it's the reason that we hold so deeply onto hope in this season. I need you to hear these words wherever you are right now in your life, in this moment. You are not forsaken. You are not forsaken. Because like the people of Israel, we are standing on the edge of the promise. And the road and journey has been difficult. In a moment of despair and hopelessness, frustration, in a season of fear and anxiety and worry, in the moment we hear these words, be strong and courageous, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. He is with you. And he goes before you. You are not forsaken. In J.R. Tolkien's epic, The Lord of the Rings, one of my favorites, Frodo has been tasked with the destruction of the ring of evil and power. And he turns to Gandalf, the the great and grand wizard, and he says, I wish it need not have happened in my time. I think these are words we all understand right now. (laughs) I wish it need not have happened in our time. It is our wish. But the power of that moment in the story is Gandalf's response to Frodo. 
we prefer to have kept on going about our lives uninterrupted by this season or this moment. All of us. So do I, says Gandalf. And so to all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what we do with the time given us. We cannot change the moment we're in. It is our cross to bear. But the moment doesn't change the mission we're on. Advent is a reminder of our mission. Of a world lost in darkness, but hope lies just beyond the horizon. The season is not proof that God has abandoned you. It is a reminder that the world is in need of a savior. And that God sent his son. You are not alone. God goes with you. And he goes before you. You are not forsaken. And because of that, we have the promise. As we end and read from Hebrews this morning, chapter 10. Brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, with the full assurance that faith brings us. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed pure with water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he was promised his faith. Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Friends, let us consider in this season how we spur one another on. The moment we're in doesn't change the mission we're on. The children of hope. Because we know that we are not alone. That God goes with us and before us. And that you are not forsaken. Rest easy in this promise. And know that God is with us. This is the hope we profess. It is the hope we hold on to unswervingly. It is the hope we share with the world. And in the darkness, a light comes. Amen. We love you. God bless. Have a wonderful day.